myself again But it's the only way you're ever gonna learn You look back and it's all in the past I'm dwelling on the thoughts I cannot see Hi, welcome along to NUFC Matters with me, Steve Wraith. Those were the days with George Mitchell as we look back in time in Newcastle United's history. And where are we are going today, George? 1962-63, where we're starting to see the semblance of uh, better times happening in this this uh, this uh, season. About time uh, too. Yes. <laughs> well, yeah, people should remember from the last one that Although we finished eighth, we had 39 points. And 39 points would have took you right down to 19th in the league that year. The only difference was that the, uh, the goal difference is what saved were. Now, Mitten got hammered for buying Barry Thomas and Scunthorpe for 45,000. But people need to remember that Barry Thomas played 12 games and scored 10 goals. And I reckon that was the difference between us being eighth and possibly down to 19th if we hadn't got those goals. So, um, but things are getting are getting brighter. Um, uh, 62, 63, just to put it some uh, perspective on it, if you want to look at the top of the pops, it was uh, Speedy Gonzalez with Pat Boone, uh, Con Stop Love New, Ray Charles, um, Telstar, the to tornado, to by the tornadoes. And of course, you couldn't have a chart without Elvis in, in the 60s. Uh, return to sender was his offering at that time. And if you wanted to go to the cinema, you want to go to the pictures, um, To Kill a Mockingbird was on the, the, the film version of uh, Harper Lee's fantastic book. Um, Lawrence of Arabia was around. Um, Dr. Noah was uh, released. Um, Lolita, uh, which got all the, the young lads hot under the colour, uh, was released. Um, the Manchurian candidate. And the man who shot Liberty Valance. Um, now I've got to admit that most, all of those I've named, I've certainly seen them. There's no doubt about that. Uh, but it was it was an incredible year for for both music and and the cinema. Um, in terms of Newcastle United, right? Norman Smith still technically our manager, but he made it plain to the directors at the end of that the last season that he would be retiring either next year or the year after. And he had no wish to go into this season as the manager. And that set them really into a bit of a quandary. What were they going to do? And they were looking at this name and that name. And to finish, it was Norman Smith that suggested, well, there's somebody staring you in the face if you'd only look a bit harder. And they said, well, who's that? And he said, well, Joe Harvey, your old captain's uh, available. Oh, but he's never managed at, at this sort of level. And then Norman says, you want somebody that's going to drive the club forward and Joe Harvey will do that. So they went for Joe Harvey. So we started this season with uh, Joe Harvey as our manager, Norman Smith as assistant. Uh, uh, and Joe Harvey brought in Jimmy Greenhall from uh, Lincoln as his uh, other coach to take over from Norman when Norman retired. So we had a whole new structure at the uh, at the top of the uh, of the club, and just to show how Harvey started off his business um, that year, um, tune in as the as they say was uh, Dave Hilly, Jimmy Eilley, Frank Clark um, from Crooktown, and of course Joe Harvey knew the Northern League because he he managed Crooktown for a couple of years and got them to win the Amateur Cup. Uh, Brian Robson from Clare Vale for seventy five pounds, would you believe? Um, uh, Ron McGarry from Bolton for 17 and a half grand. Uh, Willie Penman uh, from Rangers for 11 and a half. And Len Walker from Spellymoor United for 250 pounds. The two Scotsmen, um, uh, Dave Hilly and Willie Penman, actually were recommended by, by Ronnie Simpson, our old goalkeeper, who was uh, for a while with Third Atlantic before he went to Hibernian and on to, on to Rangers. So that was that was in. Need to remember that we'd been the, one of the richest clubs in the country in, in the country until a couple of years ago. We're now a hundred thousand in debt. So Harvey not only takes over a club that's in trouble, it takes over a club that's in, in debt as well. So two and out. So he brings all them in and out. Uh Bill Wilson goes, just released on a free. Uh, Jackie Bell went to Norwich for eight eight thousand seven hundred. Uh, 
Jimmy Wilson went back to Scotland for 1,800 quid. Ivor Old Church went back to Cardiff City for 15,000. Bob Whitehead went uh, to Darlington for 60 pound. Bobby Ferguson went to Derby for 4,000. Charlie Woods, an old friend of mine, went to Bournemouth for, for 5,000. Uh, Ken Hale went to Coventry for 10,000. Uh, Bill Deer went to uh, Peterborough for 6,000. Jimmy Carrier went to Dunfermline for three. That was a huge loss. He came from Huddersfield for about 20 grand just a couple of seasons before. So he was a, a huge loss. And Brian Wright, who had, who had bought from, from Leicester, went to Peterborough for seven and a half. So um, Harvey didn't let the grass grow under his feet. He was already already uh, setting things out the way he wanted them. And uh, um, and starting the way he, he meant to went, went meant to went go on. Um, importantly, is that you probably noticed that some of those names, like Frank Clark, uh, and and he'd already signed Bob Monker and others from the the youth side. He was bringing in a lot of talented young people as well, who are going to form the basis of a of a strong side uh, in in a couple of years' time. And uh, he he certainly cleared the decks. Um, Perhaps we'll start to look at the pictures now, Steve. And there's there's the squad as it started with uh, one or two of the people who were already gone. Um, uh, Ken Ken Hale at the back went. Billy Thompson, the centre half. Uh, Dave Hollins, the goalkeeper, who was to become a um, a, a mainstay of, of the of the club. Um, and then uh, two along as George Dalton, an old friend of mine, who became in Dave Hilly in the front row at the, at the left hand side. And uh, Barry Thomas in the middle, the, the centre forward, and Jimmy fell on, on the far right, the outside left that got from Leicester. So that's the basic squad that we went into the into the season with. And uh, it, it, it wasn't a bad squad, um, but it, it, it would change as the season went on. Next one, Steve. Now, the next one, uh, we're still in the summer here, and I'm feeling a bit cold watching these photographs. Uh, come <laughs> well... That's Aiton Banks, you might know it. <laughs> um, the, the, this season, in the middle of this season, we had um, a horrendous winter. Um, and there's a big gap in games between December and March. There's lots of postponed matches. and um, But that's, that's one of the reasons. That's the typical uh, weather picture that we had at the time. And that's uh, Leeser's Park at the same time. And that's that's slightly out of kilter because that's the new ground in the background, but that's the town moor when it's when it was snowy, and that's what it was like in 62, 63 as well. People were sledging, sledging on the moor. And that's the River Tyne all iced up round the swing bridge. Great chunks of ice, uh, ice floating down the down the river. Um really, really was a horrendous winter. And that's uh Dave Hollins digging the goal out uh, at, at the pitch to try and get a game on. And there's Joe Harvey himself set an example, digging the, digging the snow off the pitch. He had all the players out there uh, digging as well as a, as a means of uh, giving them some fitness training, I think. Uh, typical Joe Harvey. And that's a train stuck up at uh, near Bishop Auckland. Um, I mean, that, that, that's that's the engine just covered. It's just, uh, you know, unbelievable. But that that's the kind of winter it was. So there were some, some big gaps in, in the... Uh, in the program because of because of that weather, um, and the first thing I noticed with, with this year is that um, no great long list of friendlies before we start the season. <laughs> we're straight into the, we're straight into the first match, uh, and it's Cardiff City. I think there might actually be a program for Cardiff City away. Uh, that's it. Yep, yeah. and uh, we went to Cardiff for the first game, and and people weren't sure what with all this change in the in the in the squad what it was going to be like but the, the need to have worried that the, the did well we ended up with a 4-4 draw with uh um uh, fell Kerry and uh uh hilly scoring for us and Harp, uh, charles and hall scoring for for cardiff with 26 and a half thousand at the at the game um it was a as you can see, 4-4 is going to be a quite an interesting match. Um, 
our side uh, was uh, fairly predictable. Was uh, don't even need to look at the at the chart because Dave Hollands was going to be in goal. Uh, but Cardiff's team, of course, included a lot of famous players. Our team was Hollands, Keith McMichael, uh, Wright, Thompson, Dalton, Sudick, Hilly, Thomas, Kerry, and Fell. Uh, and some of those names would disappear as the season wore on as, as Joe Harvey got rid of them. And the Cardiff team included people like uh, Ivor Oldchurch, who we've just sold to them. Um, Mel Charles was playing centre forward, John Charles's brother. Alan Durbin, who we would get to know much later on as a manager of a club not far away from here. I think they need a manager now, don't they? That, that, that's, that's, At the time that's, of uh, recording, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and uh, yeah, they, they had quite a strong team, Cardiff. And as I say, players that that, that had a lot of experience and and, and we knew. Um, it was uh, interesting that we went two goals, two goals up, and then suddenly it was two two by half time. Then immediately after half time, they went. Uh, um, two goals ahead of us, and then uh, they had an own goal, and then Dave Hilly scored the equaliser um, about a quarter of an hour from the end. Uh, a real to-and-fro match, which uh, uh, which we came out of quite well. The next game is is, is Middlesbrough, um, and uh, we're away at Middlesbrough. I think there might be a Middlesbrough programme, I'm not sure. Next one is Port. No, no, that's all right. No, just leave that one for now. Um, we went to, to Aston Park, and uh, um, people were hoping that on the basis of a um, the, the result we got at Cardiff, we would do better. But unfortunately, we didn't. Uh, we we got turned over four um, two, and uh, Fell and Thomas scored our goals. Peacock, Gibson, uh, Kay, and Burbeck scored theirs. With thirty-one thousand at Aston Park, which is which is quite a good crowd for them, um, and uh, the teams. Well, our team was virtually it was ac actually the same team that played Cardiff, uh, and Dave Holland's setting off on his uh, almost ever-present uh, spot in goal when he from when he joined us. And uh, um, Middlesbrough's team was uh, had very few. Um, Great players had some stalwarts like Ray Yeoman and uh, Ian Gibson, Alan Peacock, the centre forward that replaced Brian Clough, um, were well known. But but they were a tidy football side and uh, um, managed by a, a man called Bob Dennison, who who was a well known local uh, manager and managed Middlesbrough for quite a while and got quite a reputation. Uh, we then went uh, and played to play Portsmouth. At uh, at home, and I think that was the program that you put up. I haven't put too many home programs in because they all look the same, you know. The, yeah, they, they do, apart, don't they? Yeah. Apart from the name on on the front, um, and everybody was hoping we'd get something out of this. Well, um, we did. Uh, we, we we set off uh, as usual with hearts in in our mouths because within ten minutes Portsmouth were one up, and we thought, oh God, here we go. Here's another one. Um, the, our team was. Uh, um, still the same slight change at right back Will, Bill McKilly came in at right back because Dick Keith was hurt and uh, otherwise the team was as has been at the previous two games and 36,000 at the game um, so that uh, a bit of I think a bit of faith coming back to the side because uh, uh, people wanted to so support the team and, and I think wanted to support Joe, Joe Harvey as well Um Portsmouth team, um, I just looked there and had one or two characters in. Uh, Jimmy Dickinson, who played for England for years. Uh, Johnny Gordon, who, who became a manager. Ron Saunders, who was a name that people might uh, remember from the past as, as a manager as well. And uh, so they had one or two characters. But 1-1 uh, was the score. We, we just got back into the, the game about midway through the second half. Uh, when we, Portsmouth were hanging on, and and I think uh, my memory of this game is because I was actually there, was if we'd pressed a bit harder, I think we could have won this one. Um, and incidentally, I, I, by now I'm, I'm not mentioning 
my playing part because my playing part's finished. I've been injured and the only contact I've got with players now is in the treatment room. Um, so um, I, I don't have any um, game games to uh, to relate at all. So we uh, we then have a Wednesday game um, and uh, it's against uh, Middlesbrough at home. And uh, we're thinking, well, gosh, they certainly turned me over at uh, some park. We need to do something here. Well, they did. They, they, they actually went berserk. And again, I, I remember being at this game and they just were um, unstoppable. Um, Barry Thomas scored the first goal in seven minutes. Uh, Gibson equalised for Middlesbrough and everybody thought, oh, it's going to be another one of those uh, home dingers. Um, then uh, we had uh, one one well, just before half time, and Barry Thomas scored a second. Just after half time, Barry Thomas completed his hat trick. Then Dave Hilly and Ken Hill scored two, and we beat them six uh, one. And the crowd was forty, just short of forty two thousand, which was great. And it was a Wednesday night match that one. I remember under the floodlights, uh, quite a quite an interesting game. Our side was uh, was fairly predictable with Dave Holland's goal. Um, the changes were only at fullbacks. Uh, Mac Michael was now injured, and we had Bill McKinney and Bobby Ferguson at, at fullback. Otherwise, the team had stayed the same as it from from the very first uh, uh, game. Um, and the Middlesbrough team identical to the one that uh, beat us uh, in in the earlier game, which which is uh, strange. Um, Peacock always used to give us a lot of trouble. Well, he didn't give us any trouble that night. We we, we won six one. So now we, we we have the prospect of a an away game. I think at, at Preston. Now there might be there might be a program for Preston there, Steve. Uh, the next photograph is a team photograph. Ah, right. Okay. Well, that that team photographs Middlesbrough. I think. I think you can put that up. Yeah. That I just wanted to put that in. Uh, uh, show what the what the characters were like, it, it, just to give it some, uh, make sure that there are human beings that are beside this as well. Um, and they, they were a decent football inside, but but not not nothing special. And uh, that's the program that went with it as well, with that game, that Wednesday night game. And the next one should be a, a program for for Preston away. Ah, right, okay. Um, I couldn't separate these two for some reason, um, but um, the one for the first September the first on the left hand side is, is the one for us, and uh, um, it uh, it was uh, um, an interesting game. Which uh, um, having had to w win against uh, Middlesbrough, everybody had high hopes that we might get something at Preston. Well. Typical Newcastle to build you up and then set you down. Um, and Preston beat us 2 1 um, at Deepdale, 14, just short of 14,000 in the, the game. Uh, and uh, Preston's uh, goals were go scored by Dave Wilson and, and Alec Alston. Uh, we went one up first, that which is interesting. Uh, and we, we stayed one up for about five minutes before they equalized. And then we, we capitulated in the second half to. Uh, to a second uh, goal. Um, the Preston team, um, some uh, interesting characters, well-known characters. Um, Alec Dawson at centre forward, who'd played for Manchester United, of course. Uh, and on the left wing for Preston was a young man called Peter Thompson from Cumbria, who would soon be transferred to Liverpool and become an England international and something of a, a star for Liverpool for many years. Uh, and someone that, that I'd actually played against as a schoolboy. Um, our team was was predictable again. Dave Hollands ever present with Bill McKinney, uh, Dun uh, Bob Ferguson, now Duncan Neal's in it at uh, right, right side midfield now. Billy Thompson, George Dalton, Dave Hilly, Ken Hill, Barry Thomas, Jim K Kerry, and Jimmy Fell. So it, it's a, it's a stable team that, that we're playing at the moment, and I think that's a feature of this season with Joe Harvey. Is that we we get into a we get into a um, a rhythm with the, with the team that we're, we're playing. The next uh, game is, is another away game at uh, at Scunthorpe United, uh, and unfortunately the results exactly the same. They beat us two one. Uh, I don't know if there's a Scunthorpe program there, uh, 
the yes there is oh yes yes um and uh some of these uh, clubs finding their programs is, is very difficult indeed. Um, but uh, another one that's uh, away from the three pence up the four pence. Um, uh, and 13, 13 nearly 14,000 at the game. And Scunthorpe um, had a, um, a reasonable side. But unfortunately for us, they had players in that team who, who we, we sold them. Uh, the left winger was Ken Hodgson, and the lad that played centre forward was Johnny McGuigan, who we sold them just the year, both the year, just the year before by Charlie Minton. And uh, Johnny McGuigan um, just give us give us a hard time to to put it mainly, uh, and they they scored two uh, one either side of half time, and we got a consolation just before the end by Jim Kerry. So it it. To kind of uh, knock the uh, the stuffing out of everybody. The, the two 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 defeats on the trot was uh, making life uh, a bit miserable for her. The next game we, we come to was as a, as a home game uh, against Plymouth Argyle. Now I don't think I've put the program in for Plymouth, no, um, because it, it, it's just another picture. The floodlights, as far as I'm concerned. Um, and despite having two away defeats, the crowd's still 35,000 for this match, which I think is quite respectable, bearing in mind uh, Plymouth aren't exactly the, the setting the world on fire either. Um, but uh, we uh, go into this game uh, and uh, Jim Kerry scores two, Jimmy Fell scores a third. So we're three up by half time, so everybody's expecting a cricket score in the second half. Well, they were going to be disappointed because uh, Ply Plymouth uh, fought back and, and managed to get a consolation goal on the hour. Uh, and uh, so we ended up 3-1, but still a decent win. Uh, the team's back to what I would kind of call normal. Dave Hollins, Dick Keith back, Alf McMichael's back, Duncan Neal, Bill Thompson, Jimmy Ailey's now with us, uh, Dave Hilly, Ken Hill, Barry Thomas, uh, Jim Kerry and Jimmy Fell. Those those five at the front have been the five at the front from from the start of the season, uh, and 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 done quite well really. Um, we uh, also have to uh, look at the uh, um, Plymouth team because they have uh, Dave Corbett and uh, George Kirby, uh, both of whom used to be uh, juniors with Newcastle United and were were. Um, they weren't sold to Plymouth. They were given to Plymouth as free transfers, uh, but they'd, they'd done enough to get into the first team by the time we played them. Um, but uh, but we won three one, and, and, it, and it sent people home happy. You know, that that's the important thing. The next game we we, we have is is another home game. I think is against uh, Derby County, and uh, I don't think I've got a program in for that either. No, um, no, um, and. Uh, so I haven't got a win against uh, um, Plymouth. Everybody's hoping, well, uh, let's get another win. Two on the trot would be fantastic, but it didn't happen. It, I remember this game. It was abysmal. It's the only way to describe it. It was it was a nil-nil, and it was one of those nil-nils that uh, just um, was a huge bore from start to finish. I can't remember a decent uh, shot on goal or a decent attack and move in the game. Um, uh, however, nil nil and 35 nearly 35,000 at the at the game again on a Wednesday night, and the team was uh, as red uh, Dave Hollins, Keith, Matt Michael, Neil Thompson, Eiley, Hilly Hale, Thomas, Kerry, and Fell. And uh, um, that, as I say, that's starting to uh, be Harvey's uh, style, you know, keep keep the team solid, keep it keep. Few changes, um, and uh, Derby uh, had one or two characters with uh, uh, Jack Parry uh, was an old uh, style centre forward, and uh, uh, Ian uh, Buxton was uh, was a, a high speed winger was was uh, challenge everybody, but none of them on the game. Thank goodness that night because uh, if we were awful, they they were just as bad, if if not worse. Um, the next uh, game I think we go to is an away game 
to Grimsby Town. Now, I think there is a Grimsby programme in there, is there, Steve? Oh, that's the oh, that's good on. Moving on again, yeah, that, that's the, the, just to show the team. And that's the Scunthorpe team for the same year. That's Grimsby, yeah, that's it. Um, I like the way that the, the Grimsby have their... Uh, their old uh, uh, mar mar maritime tower on the on the program, which signifies the the, the, the links to the sea and, and and fishing and all that sort of thing, and a trawler on the, on the program as well. Uh, different style, different style, anyway. Um, and we went to Grimsby with uh, having three games without a loss, and everybody thought, well, is 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 it possible we could get something out of this game? Uh, and lo and behold, we did. Um, we uh, we uh, beat Grimsby one nil. Jim Kerry scored the only goal, uh, and uh, we went to. Uh, um, I mean, the reports that I've read about this game was it was it was not much better than the Derby game. It was it was we won, but but that's all that can be said about it really. Um, the Grimsby team, um, the only um, uh, notable thing about the Grimsby team I could uh, find out was that uh, there were um, a Brian Keeble playing for them who was related to our Vic Keeble, our old centre forward from, from way back in the 50s and uh, the the other one was uh, um, um, a, a left winger called Brian Hill who had a good career with uh, um, with uh, Manchester United for a while and, and, and uh, ended up at Grimsby so we beat them 1-0 with uh, twelve and a half thousand at the game, which for Grimsby in those days, I gather, was 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 quite a quite a good save. Uh, and I would just be boring if I read our team out again because it's exactly the same: Hollands, Keith, McMichael, Neil Thompson, Ailey, Hilly, Hale, Thomas, Kerry, and Fell. Uh, so as I say, this uh, Joe Harvey's establishing his uh, his credentials as a as sticking with the with a winning team, as it were. And uh, our next game is a is a a game at Derby, and I think there might be a program for Derby in in, in there. Uh, uh, might be. Yeah. Uh, no, no, that's Stoke right. No, leave it, leave it. Yeah. Um, we went to uh, to Derby, and uh, people were hoping that uh, uh, with the runners results that we've had, we're now well above mid table. That we keep this going, it would be interesting. And sure enough, we did. We we beat uh, Derby one nil. Jimmy Fell scored the goal, 15,000 at the game, um, at the baseball ground. Uh, and uh, the Derby team was uh, had one or two um, interesting characters in, in it. And one of them, of course, was a young man called Bill Curry at centre-forward, who we'd sold the Derby just uh, the season before. Um, so Bill Curry was playing against her. Jack Parry was, was a well-known uh, uh, forward as well at the swashbuckling forward for, for Derby for a lot of years. And then on the left wing, a Ray Swallow, who who played for Derby all of, all of his career uh, and was quite a tidy and uh, difficult wing to play against. But on this occasion, he, he didn't uh, he didn't uh, cause us any problem. And we went home 1-0 and everybody uh, quite happy. Uh, and again, uh, I'm not going to... Um, bore you with reading our team because it's it's exactly the same as the one that's played in the last three matches um uh so we, we're we're heading past the middle of the league now we're, we're, we're starting to um pick up some hope and the next game is a, is a home game against uh, norwich and uh um we uh we're expecting every well Certainly, our lot was expecting that uh, we'd get something out of this match. Norwich were, were, weren't uh, uh, top of the league or anything like that. They were, were fair to middle and just, just below the, the middle of the league. And so we thought, well, this is a team that we should be able to uh, to beat. And uh, sure enough, we did. 2-1, uh, we, we beat Norwich on that Saturday. And uh, 37,000 at the game. So... Um, from the crowds, you can see the positivity is building up, and uh, the wins we've been getting have started to um, filter down to the crowd as a, as a, as a positive thing. Um, our team, well, it's predictable. 
Holland's Keith McMichael, Neil Mc, and now John McGrath's coming in at centre back instead of uh, uh, Bill Thompson, Jim Ailey, Dave Hilly, Alan Sudduck sneaking into the team now, Barry Thomas, Jim Carrey, and Jim Fell. So only slight changes, but uh, changes that were going to be important later on uh, in, in the season. Barry Thomas scored the first goal in three minutes. And then Jimmy Fell scored uh, um, a penalty on uh, 28 minutes. And just before the end, 86 minutes, Conway scored a, um, a consolation goal for Norwich. But we were never any any danger in, in, in that match. match. And uh, um, looking through the Norwich team, um, there's, a, there's a young man called Ollie Burton playing for them. Um, who we'd get to know much better later on. Um, and uh, on left-sided midfield in defence, a young man called Jackie Bell, who we've just sold, Harvey's just sold in Norwich, yeah, just, just a few weeks beforehand. And uh, so the, 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 there were people that uh, we knew and, 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 and uh, uh, certainly put themselves about during this game. So that we're, we're still winning and we're... And we're and we're above mid-table, which is a refreshing change uh, for Newcastle United for over the last couple of years. We've been struggling to uh, get anywhere near that in the past. Our next uh, home game is the uh, second round of the League Cup, and it's against Leighton Orient. Well, um, we feel... It's time we had a run in this this League Cup thing. We've not done anything with it since it started. Um, and Leighton Orient were well, a div- division down and in a bit of a bit of a mess. Uh, and so the anticipation was that uh, on this Wednesday night we would we would make progress in the League Cup. Well, as I said, Newcastle United as always never let we down, did they? One um, one was the score. <laughs> um, uh, f- b- Jimmy Fell scored our goal and a lad called Bolland scored the equaliser for Orient. And uh, it was uh, interesting. The crowd's attitude to the League Cup seemed to come through because it was only 22,000 in this game. I think the crowd had worked out that the League Cup wasn't something we were going to win and quite a lot of them stayed at home. Only 22,500 in this game, which was uh, a bit disappointing. In fact, we only stayed in by the skin of our teeth because uh, Bolland scored for them in the, in the 48th minute. We didn't get our equaliser until the 87th minute. And that was a penalty that Jimmy Fell scored. So we, we only hung on by the skin of our teeth. Our team, as I say, predictable. Uh, Hollands, Keith McMichael, Duncan Neal, John McGraw, um, Jim Ailey, uh, Dave Hilly, Barry Thomas, Ken Hill, Jimmy Fell. All, all stuck with uh, um, uh, with Joe Harvey was sticking with them rather, and uh, the uh, most important character about the late Norian team for me was the the manager who was Johnny Carey, the famous Manchester United fullback who was also a great Irish international fullback. They had one or two um, uh, characters and uh, older characters like the lad that scored the goal, Bolland. And Dave Dunmore, who, who scored, uh, who didn't score but caused a lot of trouble, um, they had both had big careers in, in London. One, Dunmore with Chelsea and Bolland with, with Arsenal as a young man, and then they, they moved on to, uh, to Orient. But uh, that night they gave us a lot of trouble. And as I say, we got a draw, uh, but we, we, we hung on by the skin of our teeth until 87th minute, uh, got, got where an equaliser from a from a penalty. We're then um, having a away trip to uh, to Walsall. Now, I don't know if I've got a programme. No, us. it's Stoke no. City next in the programme. Right, that makes sense. That makes sense. Right. We go to Walsall, and, and Walsall are uh, bumping around the bottom of the league, and everybody's hoping and praying that uh, we might take advantage of that when we go to Walsall, uh, and we weren't disappointed. We went to Fellows Park, uh, where there was... Ten and a half thousand at the game, and we beat them six nil. Um, and it was a, a real uh, sharing of the goals. Uh, Fell, Sudik, Kerry, Hilly, and then Barry Thomas got two in the eighty fourth and eighty ninth minutes just to finish it off. 
six nil. Um, it was it was even though Walsall weren't a great team, um, it was the sort of win that, that we everybody hoped. And certainly, I know in the Gallagher corner, everybody hoped that such a win would put some uh, spirit into the team for 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 games to come. And uh, as I say, we we. Uh, um, we, we we wipe the floor with them basically as a uh, 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 looking at the uh, um, the Walsall team. Um, the only one of particular interest was their left winger called uh, Colin Taylor, which uh, in a couple of years' time I think would uh, would get in it for us. Uh, he, he was quite a good player. Our um, team, uh, as I say, it keeps in very predictable. Um, the only change was that John McGraw was injured and Bill Thompson came back in at centre back, centre half, and otherwise, uh, um, as read, you know, um, Hilly, Suddick, Thomas, Kerry, and Fell. I mean, it, it, it rings, rings, uh, rings true. So now we've got the replay on the on the Monday, the first of October, at uh, at Orion for this uh, this League Cup. Now, having won six 0 at home. We thought, well, gosh, you know, come on. Um, this is a team, a league below, not playing very well. Surely we can we can get this replay out of the way. Well, we got it out of the way, all right, but not the way we wanted it. The beat were 4-2. So that was the end of the League Cup. Um, and uh, we uh, we just didn't, we just weren't at the races. I mean, just, just over 8,000 at the game. Um, and it was the two... Uh, all these uh, Bolland and, and, and Dunmore that created all the problems for were uh, Bolland, Graham, to and Norman Dealey uh, scored uh, late on, and uh, um, we, we got an own goal from somebody, and then Alan Suddick scored just before the end. So uh, four two was was the score, uh, and that was the end of our interest in the the League Cup again. Um, so it, we we. Passed on, and and interesting enough, it was we sent the same team. I mean, it, it, that team that I read out winning six nil at Walsall was exactly the same team that went to Leighton Orient and, and lost four two in, in the League Cup. Um, depressing, doesn't put it mildly um, to uh, to to uh, uh, the Gallagher corner. I can assure you. Um, we're now going to Stoke, so we, I think we've got a program for Stoke. We got an away game against Stoke. Now, having had the debacle at Leighton Orient, we don't know what's going to happen at Stoke. Uh, well, what happens is we get beat three <laughs> one, and uh, uh, six of Saturday, the sixth of October, with twenty nearly twenty seven thousand in the ground, and uh, um, Stoke get uh, three 0 up by half time, and everybody thinks, "Go, oh, we're going to get a, a real shellac in here." Uh, but we didn't. They, they, they pulled round at half time. I don't know what Joe Harvey. Well, I could guess what Joe Harvey had to say at them at half time, but I wouldn't dare say the words on here on Saturday on a, on a, a, a program like this. Um, and uh, Barry Thomas scored in the seventieth minute, and they rallied. They, they came close a couple of times, uh, but it was it was gone. It was uh, too 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 far gone for what to pull it back. Uh, so we lost three uh, one. Names in the uh, in the Stoke team, well, Stanley Matthews was still in the Stoke team at that time. He'd gone back from Blackpool. Dennis Violet was uh, was the ex-Manchester United player. Jackie Moody, the little Scottish forward who'd been at Blackpool with Matthews. And Bla Matthews obviously brought back Stoke with him. And Don Ratcliffe, an old-timer old at Stoke, who, who always uh, um, gave us a hard time, I've got to say. And our team... Same as the team that played in the other games, you know, Hollands, Keith McMichael, Duncan Neal, Bill Thompson back at centre half because John McGrath's injured, Jim Ailey, Hilly, Sudick, Thomas, Kerry, and Fell. And so, um, despite one or two disappointments, Joe Harvey's still keeping faith with the basic 11 who, who, who played, uh, played in, in the, uh, the, the games previously. Now, our next game is, is, a, is a home game. Is uh, is against uh, Sunderland. Now I don't know if yes, that's the that's the program for this match, um, and uh, 
it's uh, a game which, um, uh, well, it's important if the game will tell you when I tell you the crowd. Suddenly, 62,262 uh, on, uh, on Saturday the 13th of October um, with... Uh, um, against the the Mackhams. and uh, um, you know that that's incredible support when you think of some of the stupid losses we've had recently against Leighton Orient and people like that. And then suddenly for a derby match, uh, we can pull in sixty two thousand. I think speaks volumes about about the fan base, just as it does now. I mean, we're we're, we're talking about fans who, who've uh, probably their grandchildren and children are going to matches now, uh, but they still came in their droves when they wanted to. Um, fascinating game. I, I remember being there, and uh, the um, I think this this was the uh, I think this is the, this is the one where where Brian Clough scored their goal, and when he went to the back of the the he, in fact he put them in the lead. Uh, when he went, to, it was at the Lasers end. When he went round the back of the goal to celebrate, somebody threw an apple at him, and it hit Cluffy on the shoulder. And Cluffy, instead of uh, protesting the referee or anybody else, he picked the apple up, took a bite out of it, and threw it back at the crowd. <laughs> Typ typical Brian Clough. Nothing simple with him. And Jim Kerry got our equaliser just before half time, and then the second half was uh, was ding dong. Uh, it was a great game, a one which uh, which I was at, and, and I was in the Gallagher corner for this one uh, because I went with the uh, uh, the, the rest of the family. Um, the team this time starting to show slight changes with left-back Colin Clish, who'd been in the Youth Cup winning team uh, at the end of the previous season, uh, and Joe Harvey giving him a, a, a run out. Um, Billy Thompson at centre-half because John McGrath's still injured. Uh, and the rest, as read, Jim Ailey, Hilly Suddick, Thomas Kerry and Fell are the five forwards that have been almost since the first game of the season. Um Sunderland, well, um, was uh, fairly predictable. Jimmy Montgomery, Len Ashurst at left back, Stan Anderson at, uh, at uh, right midfield, Dickie Rooks at centre half, Jimmy McNab at, Nab at left defensive mid midfield. Hard character, Jimmy McNab. I don't know if, I, if people, the one thing people will remember about Jimmy McNab is how many times the boredom went. And he played against us because he, he was a hard character, really tough, tough guy, and uh, and was throughout. But I have to say, uh, uh, and, and being as fair as I can be, hard but fair is all I'd say. I've never seen uh, Jimmy McNabb go in to injure anybody. I've seen him go in with a hard tackle and, and come out with the ball, but I've never ever seen him make a tackle which. I would say was was intended to hurt somebody, uh, but a real character. And then in the forward line, of course, George Heard had caused all the controversy when he went to Sunderland because he had promised to sign for us. And overnight, the Sunderland chairman went up and signed him behind our backs. So he never was very popular at St. James's Park. Brian Clough, Ambrose Fogarty, a good Irish forward. And the left wing called George Mulhall, of course, who became a stalwart with Sunderland for, for, for many years. Um, and a great uh, Scottish player, and that's their team at the time. Uh, with Alan Brown, the manager, who, who, who I knew from the early on. Um, that's slightly different team than the one that played, because at the back um, uh, from the the left is that's Len Ashers, the left back, and then next to him is Seth Irwin, who I played with as a schoolboy, uh, who became their right back for years and years, uh, and. Uh, Jimmy Montgomery, and uh, signs of Charlie Hurley just coming into the into the picture as well. Now, our next game was uh, was uh, away at the Leeds. I think there's a Leeds program there, Steve. No, next one's Chelsea. Chelsea, right? Okay. Um, we went away at the Leeds, and uh, everybody hoped that with the spirit that got out of the Derby game that we might actually get something. Well, we we didn't. We lost one nil. It was a a tight match, 24,000 approximately at the game. And we went down in the fourth minute to a goal from Albert Johansson, the South African that played for Leeds. Um, but the Leeds team had names that became famous later on. Uh, Gary Sprake in goal, J 
Jack Charlton, Norman Hunter, um, Bobby Collins and Albert Johansson were, were their mainstays at the time and went on to be for, for many, many years. And our team, well, Harvey, uh, even though that they, 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 they've lost their match, Harvey sticks by the, the team that he selects. And it's Hollands, Keith, Colin Clish. He brings Brian right in for a game because Duncan Neal's injured. Jim Ailey, uh, and then the five at the front, the same. Dave Hilly, Jim Kerry, Barry Thomas, Alan Sudick and Jimmy Fell. So apart from odd switches with Sudick, um, that forward line has been the same throughout this uh, since the start of the season. So the next game we have is, is a home game against Swansea. I don't think I've got a Swansea programme in. No. Steve, no. Um, we uh, at home to Swansea. And Swansea um, aren't having a good season. They're, they're, they're struggling a bit. And everybody, everybody thinks, well, let's, let's, let's hope that they have a go at these. 24,000 at the game. I think that's a reflection on some of the games we've lost. Um, and uh, we beat them 6-0. Half-time was 4-0 and everybody expected a, another 4 in the second half. We were so dominant. And I remember, remember being at this game. Uh, it could have been 10, but uh, uh, Swansea dug in the second half a little bit more and, and, and prevented it going over the top. Um, but the goals, Jimmy fell to Barry Thomas, Alan Sudick to... Uh, own goal from Saunders, uh, and by the hour we were six nil up, and, and it was uh, an easy run out for, for the lads after that. And uh, our team, as red as, as I say, Hollands, Keith Clish, Neil Thompson, Ailey, um, on the right right wing, Billy Day rather than uh, the, than uh, what, what we'd had before. Um, but uh, Dave Hilly, Barry Thomas, Alan Sudick and Jimmy Fell to finish off. So we're, we're starting to see odd ones coming in uh, into the team. The Swansea team had uh, some uh, uh, characters in. Um, Alan Morris the, on, on their right wing was a, was a dangerous player, Welsh international. Eddie Thomas uh, in, in midfield was a, a Welsh international. And uh, the left winger, Colin Webster, was uh, had had a... Um, Started his career at Manchester United and then went to Swansea. And he also was was quite a dangerous player. But on that day, um, they just didn't turn up as far as this game's concerned. Uh, and we beat them well and truly. The next game, I think, is is the Chelsea game. The one you've got the programme for, Steve. Um, Chelsea away. That's it. Lovely. Thank you. Um, we go to Chelsea after a 6-0 win. Everybody thinks, well... Got to give them a go, haven't we? If we're, we're doing that well, well, no such luck. <laughs> the one thing about being in Newcastle fan is you're up, and you know the next time you could well be down. Where well, we were, Chelsea, Chelsea beat with four two, um, and it was it was a shame because uh, we started quite well in this game. Thirty five thousand just about at the match. Um, Bobby Tamlin scored in the first minute though and set them off, and then Barry Bridges and Bert Murray scored. And then uh, Alan Suddick and Jimmy Fell scored for us. And then just before the end, Bobby Tamlin scored another one to make it 4-2. Um, we gave goals away at critical times in this match. Otherwise, I think we, we possibly could have got a draw out of it, but uh, um, it, it didn't happen, so we lost 4-2. However, the Chelsea team, nearly half of the Youth Cup winning team from a couple of years ago, by now we've got to the... Uh, have got to the first team. Peter Bonetti, Ken Shaletto, Terry Venables, uh, Frank Upton, Bobby Tamblin, Barry Bridges and Jimmy Mulholland all played in the Youth Cup winning team. And they're now in Chelsea's uh, first 11, which uh, um, takes a lot of admiring uh, to be like that. Of course, they had uh, the inc incomparable Jimmy Greaves as well. But by now, he was, he was a big a big fee signing for Tottenham Hotspur. Um, our team uh, just slight change at centre back because John McGrath's fit now, so he, he comes in for for Bill Thompson. So it's uh, Hollands, Keith Clish, Duncan Neal, John McGrath, Ailey, uh, Dear Hilly, Thomas Sudick, and Fell. So as I say, um, Joe Harvey's sticking to the lads that he 
he thinks will do the job for him. He, he's he's trying to keep a steady team, which I, I think uh, makes sound sense. So the, the next game, I think, is a is a home game uh, to Luton. I don't think I put a home program in no. uh, for Luton. Um, and we we. I mean, the field in the Gallagher corner was Luton weren't weren't playing very well. So surely this is a team that we can we can have a go at. Um, and and sure enough, they did. Uh, we beat Luton three one, uh, one up by thirty three minutes, um, and then Barry Thomas scored two in fifty second and fifty seven minutes, and we get three 0 And on sixty seven minutes, uh, Luton got a consolation goal. And what team that day was just as I read for the previous game with. Uh, uh, only one change, and that was John McGrath injured again, and Bill Thompson come back in at, at centre, centre half, centre back. Uh, otherwise, the team was was as as red for the previous game. Luton Town, um, well, looking at their their team and, and and trying to find out, look at any characters or any well known play, players. Well, they did have one or two. Um, John Bramwell, who, who was the fullback for them. John Bramwell came from Seton Delaville uh, and had a, a good career with uh, Everton before he went to Luton. Um, John Groves was was well known uh, uh, as uh, having had a good career at uh, Southampton. And the centre forward was Gordon Turner, who eventually became Luton Town's manager. Uh, and uh, um, it was uh, it was a good win. We, 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 we certainly never looked like... Uh, um, not getting something from from that match, so we're now on my way to Southampton. We've got an away game. I think there might be a Southampton program there. Yeah, that's it. Thank you, Steve. Um, and uh, everybody's hoping. Well, come on, six pence. By the way, the the, the far yeah, too expensive. <laughs> far too expensive in the south of England. Um, showing me prejudices now. Um, uh, everybody's hoping. When I say everybody, I mean when I say everybody, I mean the Gallagher Corner, which is which is my home territory. Um, let's hope that we we, we might uh, uh, by now um, get something in in one of these away games. Well, sadly we didn't. Um, Southampton beat with three nil, and and uh, it was one nil at half time at the Dell. And uh, of course, uh, mention the name of the grounds. Of course, they don't exist anymore. Um, they've probably all got houses built on them at the Dell and uh, 13 and a half thousand at the game and uh, we uh, won down at half time and then two more in the second half uh, John Sydenham scored the first one David Burnside and George O'Brien scored the two in the second half um, the only thing I can say is we lost 3-0 and we deserved to lose 3-0 we really weren't in, in this game um, looking at the Southampton team, well, um, some uh, familiar faces to me, if not to everybody else, at, uh, at uh, what I would call right half or right defensive midfield, call them nowadays. Ken Wimshurst, who's an ex Newcastle United uh, uh, player. Um, now I played with Ken in the Newcastle A and B team quite regularly uh, when I was when I was first at Newcastle. Got to know him quite well. But Ken was one of the uh, a number of youngsters who, who fell out with Ted Hughes, the man who ran the ends and uh, um, didn't like his head teacher attitude. <laughs> and once or twice told uh, Mr. Hughes what he, what he thought. And the net result was he, Ken got transferred out of the club eventually. Um, he went to Wolves first, but then ended up at, uh, at Southampton where he had a, a decent career and became uh, a coach for a lot of years with them. Uh, centre back was Tony Knapp, who became quite uh, quite famous. On the right uh, wing was Terry Payne, who became a, a stalwart for Southampton and for England for many years. And um, on the left wing was John Sydenham, who was another one who uh, stalwart at Southampton, but also got a lot of England caps. And then midfield on the left side was a, a young lad called David Burnside. Now David Burnside started his career at West Brom and had a reputation for being a great ball juggler. And when he was at West Brom, they sometimes used to send him out at half time and entertain the crowd. Something I could never for the life of me understand. While everybody else is in the dressing room having a cup of tea or a half an orange, Dave Burnside's on the pitch, knocking his, his self to bits, 
juggling the ball and heading it and uh, playing keepy up and all the rest of it. And then out come the teams and he starts the second half having had no break at all. But anyway, Dave Burnside ended up at, at, at Southampton and he had a decent career at Southampton. Our team, very predictable. Uh, Dave Hollands, Keith Clish, Neil Thompson, Ailey, Hilly Hale, Suddick, Kerry and Jimmy Fell. Very predictable in, 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 indeed. Now, our next uh, game is a home game against uh, Scunthorpe United. And uh, that's it, yeah. And I think there may be a team picture there with, with that one, is there? No? Um, well, Scunthorpe United... No, George, uh, there's no team picture for that. Right, OK. Um, Scunthorpe United, um, we felt we owed them one for what, what happened to us when we went there. But... Uh, um, they were a tidy side, and uh, uh, they weren't going to give anything away. Uh, and twenty six thousand in the crowd, and and it was a one one draw. Um, but just to put the nerves in the Gallagher corner on edge, Scunthorpe and twenty first minute Jack Marriott, an old timer from Portsmouth, um, whacked in a, a thirty yarder to give them a um, a half time lead. And uh, try as we might, we, we couldn't get an equaliser. Um, and then eventually, 64 minutes, Ken Hill gets gets the chance and takes it. Um, and again, our team, very predictable. Hollands, Keith, Clish, Neil, Thompson, Eiley, Day, Hilly, Thomas, Hale and Fell. Apart from the odd changes, Joe Harvey's keeping faith with the, uh, with the lads that play. Um, with uh, with this Scunthorpe team, um, there were the two ex Newcastle lads in the team, John McGuigan and Ken Hodgson, uh, but they'd bought Jack Marriott on a on a very slow fee from Portsmouth, and he was still a decent player. Um, and John Kay was the centre forward, took over from Barry Thomas, and he he was uh, a handful as well. So we 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 got one one uh, against Scunthorpe, and the people went home. I wouldn't say satisfied, but at least uh, a big sigh of relief that we didn't we didn't lose because uh, another couple of losses and we would start to slip before the, the middle of the league, which is uh, not something we want to see happen. The next uh, game is is uh, an away game to uh, to Bury. I don't know if there's. I think there may be a Bury program there. No, that's the Scunthorpe team. Sorry, sorry, Steve. The next one's Plymouth, George. Right, that's fine, thank you. That, that's about right. Um, so we're at uh, at Bury, and people think, well, uh, in the past we've, we've turned them over, and we, we we look as though we we should be able to do it again because they they they're, they're bumping along the, the 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 bottom of the league rather than the top of the league. Um, twelve and a half, twelve and a half thousand at Gig Lane at the at the at the venue, and. Uh, it's a nil-nil. Um, it shouldn't have been a nil-nil because we peppered them. And their goalkeeper played out of his skin. Now, the name of the goalkeeper was Chris Harker. And Chris Harker, guess where they bought Chris Harker from? Newcastle United the season before. And Chris Harker played an absolute blinder. And uh, centre-half for them was none other than the player manager, Bobby Stokoe. Um, who again we 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 sold to uh, Bury, um, and took John McGrath in, in part exchange. Um, some would say a good bit of business. I think a lot of people were upset at the way Bob Stoke was treated by Newcastle, but that's that's water under the bridge. Anyway, he was playing centre half a good uh, against us, and played out of his skin is, is all I can say. As did uh, uh, Chris Harker, the the the, the goalkeeper. Um, so it was it was a nil nil, uh, and we uh, came home feeling robbed in some ways. I think, but uh, if you don't put the ball in the back of the back of the net, well, nil nil is what it is, and 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 that's how it stayed. And uh, our team again, very very predictable. The only change was is that uh, Barry Wat Barry Thomas is injured, and George Watkin, a, a young centre forward who played in the youth. Uh, cup team that won the youth cup the season before. Uh, Joe Harvey gave him a run out at centre forward, and 
uh, and, and he had a decent game, but uh, like the rest of them, he just couldn't find a, a ball that went into the back, back of the net. So we're now heading to a home game against uh, uh, Rotherham United. And Rotherham, again, are, are just about where we are, just hovering about the middle of the league, a little bit up, a little bit down. Uh, and so the, the, the view in the Gallagher corner is, well, if we can beat this team, it would do us good because it would send them in in the opposite direction to us and uh, beat them. We did 4-1, um, 22,000 at the game. Um, and uh, uh, the Irish wingers brought in by Joe, Joe Harvey, Liam Toohey, uh, Jim Kerry and Ken Hill scored two goals towards the end. Uh, and Hugh McElmoyle scored for, for Rotherham. Um, our team, very predictable. Same team as played in, in, in the last match. Uh, and for um, Rotherham, uh, their manager was Danny Williams, who'd had a, a big career with Sheffield Wednesday. Uh, and then going down that, that team, uh, Peter, Peter Madden, who'd had a, a big career with, with Leeds. Uh, Hugh McElmoyle, who was playing uh, as sort of a deep line centre forward for them. A uh, very uh, huge career with uh, with Leicester and, and, and Ireland. And uh, um, again, um, uh, caused us a lot of, a, a lot of bother. But uh, um, we won 4-1 and everybody went home feeling um, happier than they had been. Um, it... Uh, uh, because, as I say, it, it sent Rotherham in the opposite direction to us because they were hovering about the middle of the league like we were uh, and it uh, gave us some some clear water from them. We then had a home game against Cardiff City and uh, we're now um, heading to... Uh, we're into December and we're now getting into the bad weather where there might be some some big breaks in the, in the games. 28,000 at the, at the game... Um, and just to put us on tenter hooks in the Gallagher corner, Cardiff score first in, in uh, 13 minutes, and uh, try as we might, we thought this is not going to happen. You know, they we're actually running them ragged and bombarding their goal. But could we? Could we? Could we get a goal? No, we, we couldn't. And uh, um, it took to the 85th minute. To get the equaliser, and the 86th minute to get the winner to beat them two one, um, and it, it was a you could hear when the, the second goal went in, you could hear a collective sigh of relief in the Gallagher corner, uh, those that were left because remember this tradition about going out when the ten minute flag goes down. Well, the ten minute flag has it already gone, and when they went, we were still losing one nil. Um, so they would get a nice surprise when, when they got home or when they bought the pink uh, that we won 2-1. Um, our team, predictable. Um, Hollands, Keith Clish, uh, Neil Thompson, Eilie Hilly, sort of Ron McGarry now, uh, bought from Bolton coming into the team. Jim Kerry and Jim Fell. Um, the uh, Cardiff team uh, has some great Welsh stalwarts in. Uh, Mel Charles again, John Charles's brother. Um, Alan McIntosh, um, Alan Durbin, who we've already mentioned in the previous game, uh, ended up uh, as manager of our neighbours. Uh, Derek Tapscott, who, who was made famous his career at Arsenal, had now gone home to uh, to Cardiff. Ivor Alchurch, our our old player, uh, and Peter Hooper. They were a dangerous team, but on that day we we, we absolutely ran them ragged, ragged. we just couldn't put the ball in the back of the net until, as I say, uh, two minutes before the end and we, we, got, a, we got a couple of uh, uh, goals to, uh, to get the win. So we're now into uh, uh, an away game against uh, Portsmouth and I think there should be a Portsmouth programme there. No, it's Plymouth next. All right, that's OK. That's OK. That makes sense. That's fine. Um we go to Portsmouth. Um, no, I think I've mentioned on here before, my, my lot love going to Portsmouth. Um, they always felt very welcome at Portsmouth. Uh, and the first thing they do when they seen the fixture was organise the bus with Alfie Hollands and get the tickets and 
and go to the away game. Um, but of course, I said get the tickets. Didn't need to get the tickets in those days. You just went, <laughs> and it, because uh, you could go in the ground any anywhere. You didn't need to be um, home supporter, away supporter. As long as you paid your money at the turnstile, you went, you got in. Uh, and and so I went out, uh, booked, booked Alfie Holland's bus and, and went to Portsmouth. I mean, what amazed me is they did it year after year. It's a hell of a travel. On the, I mean, now, never mind then when it was no more ways, that sort of thing. Um, and, and they went to Portsmouth. Unfortunately for them, uh, we lost 3-1. Uh, so the trip was uh, was quite a miserable one. Ne nearly 19,000 at the game. And Portsmouth were one up in 20 minutes. Jimmy Gordon scored. Um, everybody got excited because Ron McGarry scored his opening goal for Newcastle. Uh, uh, and and we, got, uh, we went to 1-1. And then just on 80 minutes... Two quick succession goals from Dave Dobson, Alan, Albert McCann, and Portsmouth won 3 1. Um, as I say, miserable ride home. And uh, um, Portsmouth characters were just as were, were in the first the game that came to St. Germans. Jimmy Dickinson, Johnny Gordon, Ron Sanders, uh, Albert McCann, all well known characters in football for many years, either as players or as managers or both. Uh, our team, again, very predictable. Hollands, Keith, Clish, Neil, Thompson, Eiley, Hilly, Sudik, McGarry, Kerry and Fell. Uh, but on that day, it uh, it didn't work for us. Um, so we, we, we lost at, uh, uh, at Portsmouth. The next game is an away game to Plymouth. And I think there is a programme for, for Plymouth. Um, again... Um, the may not always like that go to Plymouth as well, but two two travels like that on two weekends was just too much, and to be frank, too bloody expensive for them as well. <laughs> they would be broke after the Portsmouth game, and they certainly wouldn't have the money to cut the Plymouth game. Um, but uh, um, we went to Plymouth uh, tail between my legs because uh, Portsmouth had turned us over, and we we thought, well, this is. They, they weren't a bad team, but they weren't. They were below the middle of the league where, where we were. Where and uh, so we went to home park, twelve thousand at the game, and uh, everybody thought, well, let's see what happens here. We're, we're not. Are we going to do anything with them? Um, and uh, first half was uh, close, coming to a close when just before the half time, whistle Ron McGarry scored and made it one nil. Uh, and uh, um, it was a uh, sigh of relief again because we're, we're in the lead. What we wanted to do was to see them hold on to a lead. We'd been in the lead in other games, and we want to hold on to this lead. And the, Port, the Plymouth team, there were, were names we know. Uh, Peter McPartland, who was a big star with the Villa and Ireland. Uh, Mickey Lille, uh, Dave Corbett, and... Uh, uh, Right, uh, Johnny Williams, who, who again were two ex Newcastle juniors who were who were let go on free transfers. Our team at, at Plymouth, um, again, very predictable. Um, it's uh, uh, Dave Hollands, Keith Clish, Neil Thompson, Ailey, Dave Hilly, Ron McGarry, Barry Thomas, Jim Kerry, and Jim Fell. And uh, second goal for us, uh, was scored. By um, Barry Thomas scored uh, the second goal in the 65th minute. For so it was a, a quite a, a decent, decent, uh, a decent win away from home, and of course we needed it because our next game is an away game against our near neighbours, and I think there is the program there from from Sunderland, Steve. Yep, that's it, and. Uh, um, it was a a humdinger, so I would describe it. But a goalless draw humdinger. Um, sixty two thousand four hundred and twenty at uh, Roker Park, and uh, interestingly enough, the referee was from Durham. Now there, there's a nice one. <laughs> uh, 
a referee of a derby match from from Durham. And uh, my experience when I was county commissioner for Durham was it depend which side of the border you on because people out at Barnard Castle were Newcastle supporters, people at Darlington were Sunderland supporters. It was it, you were in Durham, but you you weren't sure which territory you were in. Anyway, um, it was a it was a humding ever game. I remember being at this game, uh, and uh, as I say, sixty two and a half at the game. Nil nil, but end to end, it, it was a nil nil more by good luck than good management. We were, the, both teams really went for it, uh, and uh, uh, predictable teams: Sunderland, Montgomery, Nelson, Ashurst, uh, Anderson, Charlie Hurley, and now McNabb, Hurd, Fogarty, Nick Sharkey, Johnny Crossan, who was another Irish player that went to Sunderland, and George Mulhall, and our team. The same team as we've been playing nearly all season. Um, the only difference is that we've now got Ron McGarry in the forward line uh, instead of uh, Alan uh, instead of Alan Suddick. Uh, so nil nil, and 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 we're still because we didn't lose, we're going in the right direction uh, and and uh, in the league, and, and everybody's feeling a bit positive. My next game is an away game to uh, to Bradford. Yeah. But it's the FA Cup third round. And everybody thinks, well, surely uh, we'll get... So, we, 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 Bradford aren't even doing well in their own league, never mind our league. So hopefully we'll be, be able to do something against them. And do and behold, uh, for once, as predicted, um, we beat them 6-1. Uh, and, and everybody thinks, well, this is, this is an FA Cup. Run on the start on the on the on the go, and uh, we chose Tarvis changed the team slightly. Gordon Hughes has come in on the right wing, scored two goals. Barry Thomas scored, Dave Hilly scored, and then Ron McGarry scored two goals just around the six off. And Brian Kelly scored for for Bradford City. Um, Bradford City, interestingly enough, had one or two older uh, characters on from from uh, other teams like. Uh, Stan Stoughton, who, who was a great player for Huddersfield, uh, Roy Allen from Huddersfield, um, uh, Malcolm, uh, uh, McDivitt, uh, Malcolm Divitt, who played for Everton and, and was uh, sort of on his way out. Their manager was Bob Brocklebank, who was who was a well-known known manager. Um, our team, as I say, apart from the change of having Gordon Hughes on the right wing instead of uh, Day or... or uh, Whoever else was there, the team was the same, but with Barry Thomas, with Ron McGarry alongside Barry Thomas. We're now at home to uh, Leeds United, um, and uh, we uh, um, uh, looking to get something out of this game um, because Leeds are, are round about where we are in the league, and uh, if we could send them in the wrong direction, that would be great. Uh, but it didn't work out like that. 30,000 in the crowd, just about. And uh, Jim Story scored for Leeds um, uh, in 13 minutes and put the Gallagher corners' nerves on edge and on edge for the whole rest of the match because tries we might, we couldn't get an equaliser. Uh, we should have had several goals, but no, it didn't do it. Um, and lo and behold, with nearly the last kick of the game, Dave Hilly scores an equaliser, 1-1. One, one. And as I say, the collective sigh of relief in the, in the whole of St. James's, never mind the Gallagher corner. But again, the 10-minute flaggers would miss it. They'd have to read it in the pink uh, or in the news later on. The Leeds team, our team was uh, predictable. As, I'm not going to read it out again because it's the same as what was in the team before. Leeds... Um, uh, Sprague, Paul Rainey coming into the team now, uh, Jack Charlton, Norman, Norman Hunter, uh, Jim Story, Bobby Collins and Albert Johansson. So their um, team which got them promotion, you can see it's starting to form for Leeds in, in these games. And, and in some ways, not surprising that we, we, we weren't able to turn them over. So here we go. Replay of the FA Cup fourth round. Uh, sorry. The FA Cup fourth round, not a replay, FA Cup fourth round, and we're away to Norwich. Now, with everybody's thinking, well, surely um, we'd at least get a draw and bring them back, if, if nothing else. 
Well, I'm afraid this is one of the occasions when Newcastle, true to form, weren't to form and got thrashed 5-0 by Norwich at Carrow Road. Um, 35,000 at the crowd and uh, Norwich's biggest gate of the season, by the way. And Norwich, Terry Alcock got at four and Joe Mullet scored the, 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 the other one. We were a game we were never, ever in, really. Um, I'd love to have heard what Joe Harvey had to say to this team when they went off at the final whistle. I bet it wasn't printable, never mind. Um, he, he would be disappointed, to put it bluntly. Um, <laughs> and, and the team, you know, it wasn't as though... And, and there's the there's the programme. Thank you, Steve. Uh, and it wasn't as though the team was, was changed greatly. It wasn't at all. It was Hollands, Keith Clish... Neil Thompson, Ailey, Hughes, Hilly, Van Gary, Kerry, and Jimmy Fell. I mean, the only difference is that Barry Thomas wasn't in the team because he was he was injured and Jimmy Kerry came in the team. Uh, but we were well and truly played off the pitch by Norwich that day. So that's the end of our um uh FA Cup dreams for another year. We're now away to Swansea. I don't know if I've got a Swansea programme in there on there. I think they might have. Yes, yeah. Um and uh, because they're in a round where we want to be, uh, again, this is another one where we want to send them in the wrong direction. Uh, but unfortunately, it didn't happen. Um, they sent us in the wrong direction. Derek Draper scored um, the winning goal for Swansea, and uh, we lost 1-0. Our team for that game, uh, Hollands, Keith, George Dalton's come in at left fullback now. Duncan Neal, John McGrath, Jim Ailey. In the forward line, Hughes, Hilly, McGarry, Kerry and Fell. Same five. So it, it, throughout this season, you can see Joe Harvey sticking to um, a tight group of players when he's selecting teams for, for, for our games. And uh, so we lost at Swansea. We come home, home match at, uh, against uh, Chelsea. Now, having seen what happened with Chelsea away, um, Everybody wanted to at least get something out of the game and hopefully turn them over. Well, lo and behold, we did. We did. We beat them 2-0. 39,400 in the crowd. Um, but Chelsea always a good draw to, uh, in Newcastle. And the team was exactly the same team that played in the previous game against Leeds. And, and, and uh, Barry Thomas uh, came in uh, as the only change. And... Uh, uh, Jim Kerry dropped out and Barry Thomas and Jimmy Fell scored the two goals uh, and we beat Chelsea 2-0. We beat them 2-0 but we it, it wasn't it wasn't um it wasn't a problem. We 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 beat them with uh, uh with something to spare I would say. So we we we're, we're heading past halfway in the league now and people are feeling uh, confident. We're at home to Grimsby next and everybody's thinking well uh, we beat, we, we hammered them at the home ground. We'll do the same here. Well, we didn't. It was a miserable nil-nil draw. Uh, 28, 27,884 on the ground. And uh, despite having numerous chances, uh, we couldn't stick one in the back of the net. And uh, Grimsey went away with a, with a nil-nil draw. And we felt, uh, when I say we, the you know, Castle fans felt robbed because we'd had enough chances to win. Three matches, never mind one. So we nil nil uh, against Grimsby, and uh, the next game is an away game to uh, to Luton Town. Now I don't know. I've got a Luton program. I think I've got a Luton program. Yep. Um, strange program, the Luton one. I, I, uh, it, it they could do with a new type setter for the program as well. I'd say. Um, yeah. Um, we went to Luton. Uh, Hoping that we might get something, bearing in mind how we were able to manage them at St James's Park, and we did. Surprise, surprise! We we, we lived up the form and beat Luton three uh, two, seven thousand two hundred at Kellenworth Road, and uh, interestingly enough, we went. Barry Thomas put us one in, in a lead at uh, just before half time, and then just after half time, Jimmy Fell made it. Uh, 2-0. Then Ron Davis, who was playing for them, who they just acquired from Southampton, um, scored two very quick goals 
and to make it 2-2. And right on the last death, Alan Suddick scored with the last kick of the game to make it 3-2 to us. Um, and uh, the Luton team hadn't changed much since we, we we met them before, except that, as I say, Ron Davis now in that in the forward line, who they'd brought from Southampton. Our team was uh, very predictable. Change it right back. Bill McKinney came in for Dick Keith. Otherwise, uh, oh no, there was there was another significant change. It, it uh, uh, centre half was a young man called Bob Monker. Yeah, um, uh, and uh, it was it was his uh, it was his first team uh, debut, and uh, um, he was. Uh, he had a great good games, or, or, or but my memory tells me uh, that reading about the game, he, he had a good game. Um, but otherwise, the forward line, Suddick, Hilly, Thomas, McGarry fell. It, 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 it's almost imprinted on your mind now that uh, that that's what what the forward team, the, the team's going to be. Now we're, we're stretching ourselves. We're we're above middle now, uh, and, and heading towards hopefully uh, even top. So uh, to near the top. So we play Charlton at home next. And uh, Charlton always give us a good game. We've got 30,300 in the, in the game. And uh, um, half time, it's 1 1 with uh, Willie Penman now into the team, having been brought from Rangers. Uh, scored uh, um, on 42 minutes. And everybody's thinking, oh, well, good time to score, go in 1 1 0 at half time. No such luck. Mike Bailey scored for them, for Charlton, on 43 minutes. So we went in 1-1, not 1-0. And then after half-time, Hilly and Suddick scored for us. And then right at the end, uh, Brian Tocknell scored for, for Charlton to make it 3-2. An entertaining game is is, uh, is how I'd describe it, because uh, I remember being there for this one. And uh, um, our team uh, was predictable, as, as was... The big change to announce was Dave Hollands isn't in goal. The first game of the season that he misses through injury and Stuart Mitchell's brought into the team by uh, by Joe Harvey. Um, and that was that is the only game I think that Dave Hollands misses in this particular season. Going back to uh, Charlton, um, they have uh, uh, Fred Lucas, Jimmy Ryan and Roy Matthews is the three strikers who uh, um, uh, would cause trouble to any any defence, is, 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 is how I'd put that. Um, we're now at home to Southampton, and uh, everybody thinks, well, let's, uh, let's carry on the good form and uh, reverse what they did to us at, uh, at the Dell. And we did. We beat Southampton 4-1. Um, but um, it's interesting that we we go into two 0 lead to half time, uh, and and I remember we we kind of sat back sat back on our laurels, and then uh, um, I don't know what was said by Joe Harvey on the touchline, but all of a sudden they seemed to wake up, and Alan Suddick scored, and then Jimmy Fell scored, and just before the end, Southampton got a, a, a consolation from a young man called Martin Chivers, who. A few weeks later, they would sell for a fortune to Tottenham Hotspur, where he would make a big name for himself and become a, a, an England international. Our team was predictable from, from other teams. The only difference is we now got Willie Penman sneaking into the team and uh, uh, Dave Hollands is back uh, in goal. Uh, and uh, Willie Penman from Rangers is, is now sneaking into the team as well. And... Uh, so um, the same same characters, Ken Wimser, Tony Knapp, uh, Terry Payne, and as I say, Martin Chivers at centre forward, Dave Burnside, all all the characters that, that, that they had when we played them the first time. We're now at home to Huddersfield Town, and uh, everybody's thinking, well, um, surely we can we can turn them over. Um, they the in the bottom half of the league. Um, well, uh, unfortunately, it doesn't work like that with Newcastle United. Um, we drew 1-1 one, one, and were very, very lucky to draw 1-1. One, one. Mike O'Grady scored for Huddersfield in the seventh minute, so everybody was on biting their fingernails. 
50,000, nearly 50,000 at this game, by the way. And uh, Ron McGarry scored the equaliser on 12 minutes to get win at half time. But Huddersfield absolutely run were ragged in the second half. Um, our team, uh, predictable, I'm not even going to read it because people will remember the names from uh, from the teams I've just read. Dave Holland's in goal, as usual. Now, the Huddersfield team, it's got a number of uh, old-timers in, like the goalkeepers, Ray Wood, who they got from uh, um, Manchester United. Um, John Coddington, centre-half, Peter Dinsdale at... Uh, another defender and centre forward, Len White, who used to be our centre forward, who'd been transferred to Huddersfield at the end of the season before. Len White caused us no end of trouble. As I say, the second half there ran us ragged. And the other one that caused us trouble was a, a, a man called Chris Balderstone, who is probably as well known playing cricket for England and uh, in Yorkshire as he was for his football exploits. Uh, but they ran us ragged, ragged, ragged in that second half. Um, and uh, um, interestingly enough, um, our next game, because this is the Easter games, you notice how the games from December and through February all crunched up because of the bad weather. We're now in the Easter games, and the second Easter game is Huddersfield away. Um, so we go to Leeds Road to uh, play the second game and manage to lose 2-1. Um, now, after the second half of Fudders field against us at St James's Park, very few people would be surprised that we got beat. Um, they went uh, one up by with Coddington, 14 minutes. We really equalised on 35. And then at 55, Kevin McHale, one of their stalwarts, managed to get the, the winning goal. 22,000 at, at Leeds Road on that day. And again, our team is uh, uh, the one that Joe Harvey's happy with, really. Very few changes. Hollands, Keith, Klish, Ailey, McGrath, Dalton, Suddick, Hilly, McGarry, Penman and Fell. Um, and and we're, we're now um, above the middle and starting to have hopes of, of something special. So we're at home to Bury now. And everybody thinks, well, we've just had a series of uh, of, of great wins at home. Can Bury be the next one? Um, and uh, especially as they aren't playing very well, um, they, um, uh, they, 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 they're struggling to get some form. Oh, uh, well, guess what? The Bury come and beat with 3-1. Uh, absolutely took with the pieces. How how people explain it, I don't know. And as a, again, as I say, I'd love to be a fly on the wall in the dressing room when Joe Harvey talked to them at half time and at full time. Um, Twenty five thousand at the game, and our team was uh, the same as has been for weeks, except that Liam Two is on the left wing, the Irishman, uh, and uh, um, uh, um, otherwise it's the same. The Bury team, of course, has got Chris Harkless still in goal for them. Um, uh, Brian Turner's uh, centre back now. Joe, Joe, uh, Bob Stoto is playing uh, himself, uh, and they have a, young, a, a new player called Billy Griffin, uh, who they got from uh, Bolton, I think. He he tore us to shreds, absolutely tore us to shreds, and uh, it was. Uh, um, McGarry uh, Calder scored a hat trick, 28, 67, 81st, and Bill McGarry got a consolation on the, the fifth, 46th minute. So, um, to say that the Gallagher went home disappointed after that game is putting it mildly. So, we're now in, in, in the catchy up games in April. We're playing on the Tuesday night away at the Charlton. And uh, I think there may be a Charlton program there, Steve. Last yep. one, last picture. Yeah, that's it. And uh, so we, we, we await the Charlton and uh, um, everybody's a bit gloom after the Borough result and not sure what's going to happen here. Uh, but lo and behold, uh, I don't know what uh, Joe Harvey said to them or what how many Wheatley Bicks he gave them, but they won 2-1 at Charlton. Uh, a game which uh, 
they could easily have, have lost because Charlton were playing well. 12,500 at the game. And uh, uh, the Charlton team was uh, much as the one that played with, um, uh, up here. Um, the two only notable changes I would mention is that they had a, a, a young right winger called Len Glover who would become famous with Charlton and a, a left winger called Cliff Durant who was from Tyneside. Um, he went to St. Aidan's School in Walls, Walls End um, and played for Walls End boys when I did. Uh, I often wondered what had happened to him and then he suddenly turns up on the left wing for, for Charlton Athletic. Um, our team, predictable. Uh, change it right back with Bill McKinney. Bob Bunker's back at uh, central defender because uh, uh, Billy Thompson and John, John McGraw aren't... Uh, uh, Billy Thompson or that's not uh, not fit and then you look at the forward line and I had to look at the forward line three times centre forward John McGrath and I thought what what the hell's that and 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 it's it was, it was true uh, two of the forwards were injured so uh, Joe Harvey in his wisdom decided to throw Put John big John up front I thought so, <laughs> At least, he, at least he would be a target man, and by hell, he would be as well. He'd, he'd cause them all sorts of problems. Well, he caused them enough problems that we we, we got a two-one win. And by now, we're, everybody's starting to think, "Wait, well, hey, we're, we're we're well above middle here. We we'll, we'll keep this up, and we're we're, we're in with a shout of uh, promotion." And uh, so we go away to uh, Rotherham United. I don't think there's a no. That was the last program. So. It's, and everybody thinks, well, we, we nearly beat them at home. Why can't we do it away? Well, we didn't. <laughs> they beat us 3-1. Um, 9,000 at the game. And uh, we went ahead in the second minute. And the goal scorer was John McGrath. Would you believe? <laughs> um, but we didn't hold on to it. 13 minutes, 53. And uh, 75 minutes, Ken Houghton scored a hat-trick. Uh, and uh, we, we never got back into this game at all. The only thing worth mentioning is that um, Rotherham had a young centre forward called Albert Bennett, who in a couple of years' time uh, would be bought by Newcastle United and become something of a something something of a, a, a fan uh, hero to, to some of us anyway. Uh, and our team very predictable, the same as what played at Charlton. And Harvey kept John McGrath at centre forward, and his his faith was renewed because he scored a bloody goal, <laughs> which is uh, it. I had to look twice when I saw that in the program, and I had to start digging to see in the chronic old chronicles to see what what happened, and and it was just simply that the Barry Thomas and uh, and others were, were were and Ron McGarry were injured, so he just tied big John McGrath up, and then I thought that's. Uh, Says a lot about Joe Harvey more than it is about the players, I think. Anyway, our next game is a home game against Stoke. And uh, we're hoping to uh, uh, get back on the winning trail. And we do, 5-2. We take take Stoke apart, really. Uh, 27,000 at the game. And our team is uh, um, more predictable. John McGrath's back at centre-half. And Ron McGarry's back at centre-forward. Um, so we're, we're looking more like the... Uh, uh, the Newcastle United that we're used to. The Stoke team, um, Jackie Moody was in. Uh, the, by now, Jimmy McElroy had left Burnley and was playing for, for Stoke. No Stanley Matthews, though, in this team. Uh, I think I've said before on here that uh, Stanley had a reputation of not liking St James's Park. I never got to the bottom of that, but certainly the, the times we went uh, from, the, from the Chicken Road Academy to see Stanley Matthews, and he, and he never turned out. He, he wasn't. He wasn't in the in the team at all. So now we're off to Norwich for an away game, and uh, it uh, with some trepidation. If you remember what Norwich did to win the cup, <laughs> five five nil, and take out the cup, um, and everybody's thinking, well, this is this is not going to go well. Well, lo and behold, it did. Um, they knuckled in and. 1 2 1 at, at Norwich, six seat, nearly 17,000 in the crowd. Um, Bill McKinney and Ron McGarry scored the goals, and Barry Statton got the consolation for um, for Norwich. And again, in the Norwich team, a very young centre forward called Ollie Burton playing, and uh, we'll eventually get uh, get to know very well. Um, Jimmy Hill was playing for them by then, 
as his days at Fulham were, were numbered and he was he was on the on the way down. Um our team was uh um as I said predictable and expected McGrath back at centre half, McGarry back at centre forward, the forward line, Sudik uh, and this this time Duncan Neal playing inside inside right moved forward from from the midfield. Ron McGarry, Dave Hilly, and Jimmy Fell, but very much the team that, that, that Harvey started with. So next game is at home to Walsall. Now, in the away game at Walsall, we 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 really thrashed them. And everybody had the high hopes that a win here and we would be better than in the middle of the league, would be would be pushing the, the, the promotion teams. Um and only Newcastle could do this. A team rattling along the bottom of the league comes to St James's Park and beats with 2-0. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, Newton and O'Neill scored their goals, 22,000 at the game. And uh, we, uh, um, same team, you know, Hollands, McKinney, Dalton, Wright, McGraw, Eilly, Sully Killy, Gary, Penman and Fell. And they lost 2-0 to Walsall, a team that were hammered on uh, uh, on the away game. And uh, the uh, Walsall team had no new additions. Uh, and as I say, the one player that uh, catches the eye is Colin Taylor, the left winger, who uh, ultimately uh, eventually ends up with, with us. Um, so we're away to Rotherham now. Uh, and we uh, think, well... Um, no, we're not away to Rotherham. I've got twenty uh, seventh of April. No, we're at uh, we're at um, Walsall now. I've got a, I've got the papers mixed up a bit there, Steve. Right, I'll do the adverts, George. Big right, uh, okay. thank you to our sponsors, Skips and Bins. Telephone 0800 25 Email inquiries at skipsandbins.com. Website www.skipsandbins.com Easy contract free and pays you go waste collection. Thanks to Darren Baldwin Funerals. You can find them at 304 Old Durham Road, Gateshead or telephone 0191 478 2730. Website darrenbaldwinfunerals.co.uk Thanks to Garden of Healing Dispensary, CBD Hemp and Cannabinoid Specialists, www.thgohd.com and Mr. Vicky's Handmade Sources from Cumbria. You can find them at mrvickies.co.uk or by phone on 01768 210102. Thanks to Away Day Clothing and to Media Arts for all the help with the video side of things and the qtechshop.co.uk, the makers of pool tables and snooker tables in Walls and Newcastle and the guys who run our website, nufcmatters.com. If you want to subscribe, hit the NUFC Matters logo in the bottom right-hand corner. Click like to like the video and click share to share your social media. We're also available as a podcast on iTunes and Spotify and the rest. If you want to join the channel, hit join underneath the video or put your smartphone over the QR code and it'll take you straight to the membership side of things. If you do it that way, you'll get a cup, a pen, a scarf and a membership card. If you want a car sticker, then email john at nufcmatters.com and he will send you a free car sticker out. We also support the food bank, nufcfansfoodbank.co.uk is the place to make a donation at the virtual match day bucket. Don't forget Peter Beardsley Soccer School. Uh, information about that is found at his website, peterbeardsleysoccerschool.com. Okay, George. Right. Well, at the last game of the season, and even at this stage, if we win this, we can start pushing the people higher up than us. But uh, it's Preston, and Preston come and we draw 2 2. Uh, and I think the disappointment of the previous two games, a few games, because people got to expect it that we a couple of wins and we would have been pushing the promotion teams. Um, the disappointment shows in the crowd. 13,000 at St. James's Park. Uh, it, what it must be like, though, uh, I wasn't at this game, but what it must be like to be in St. James's when there's only that many in the crowd. It, it must be awful. Um, I mean, I want to talk to your neighbour, you'd have to shout, I think. Um, anyway, um, Preston came, gave, gave quite a good count of themselves. Uh, we we fielded um, a very predictable team: Hollands, McKinney, Dalton, um, McGrath, Ailey, Hughes, Hilly, McGarry, Suddick, and Fell. So it wasn't about team changes. Um, and uh, we went ahead in twenty minutes to Alan Suddick, and then Alex Dawson scored one in thirty six, so it was one one. Then just after half time, Alex scores Dawson makes it two one to Preston. 
and then we have to scramble uh, and I mean scramble to get the equaliser through Gordon Hughes on 81 minutes um, Preston's team um, some names that people might remember uh, Alan Kelly the goalkeeper who became quite well known Howard Kendall, who became famous as an England player when he was with Everton and uh, as Everton manager, of course. Peter Thompson, who I've already said, ended up at Liverpool, played for Eng England. Ale Alex Dawson, who came from uh, um, Man Manchester United. And Doug Holden, by now, was on the left wing, who came from Burnley, who were the champions. So that's 62-63. We finished, um, in some ways considering it was Harvey's first season, a creditable seventh. But if one or two of those games that we'd drawn or, or one or two that we thought we should have won, we did win, we would have been pushing the uh, uh, the teams that, that got promoted. I mean, we got 47 points, 80 goals, 59 against, uh, and the team that got promoted uh, was... Uh, um, uh, only had 56, I think. So we weren't a million miles away uh, from 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 getting the uh, near the promotion spot, but I think as a as a first season for Joe Harvey and management, it wasn't a bad shot. Um, top scorers were uh, Barry Thomas and Jimmy Fell, who got sixteen each, and then there were one or two others that weighed in with double figures, which is how we got the nearly eighty goals, which was quite creditable. So not a bad season, a happier season than the previous one. But showing signs that there's there's better to come, uh, and as I say, a good start for Joe Harvey. Great stuff, George. As always, a wonderful, uh, wonderful guide through that year. Very concise. Some great stuff. Some great stories and some great photos to boot. As always, a pleasure doing it with you, George. And looking forward to thanks, uh, Steve. To getting uh, getting together for the next episode. It's already ready for you. Great stuff, mate. Take care. Bye bye. Bye, Steve. Thank you.